From the slowest downloads to the smoothest streams of cyberspace, welcome to the Kadawa Show. And here's your host, Arthur Kadawa. Welcome everybody, welcome to another amazing episode of the Kadawa Show. Remember, if you want to be a guest here on the show, let us know in the comments down below. And if you're not chosen, then at least I get to communicate with you and leave you a comment or tell you what we're kind of looking for in the show. I'm searching for people that put a lot of effort into their videos. They're going to be making them for a long time to come and expose themselves, expose your voice, expose who you are, record yourself. People like to see people so that they can connect with them. And that's who I'm looking for. So today we got a great show. We got a digital artist here. So please welcome Kiwi Bird to the show today. Or should I say tonight? <laughs> From the land of the hobbits, today we have a special digital painter for you. Please welcome Kiwi Bird to the show. There she is. Alrighty. Welcome to the show. How would you like me to refer to you as today? Um, like name wise? Yes. Um, just Kiwi's fine. Okay, Kiwi. That's a cute name. You said that's your real name. You made sure that of that in your profile on YouTube? It's not. Do people question that often? Oh, it's yeah, not. Uh, I put that there because people ask me a lot. Um, my name is Eliana, but no one can ever remember it, so I go by Kiwi. I see, I see, okay. Eliana, that's a nice name. Um, Thank you. Now you have a, I guess that's, that's a common theme of birds around your profile. Do you have something for birds? Is that your favorite animal? Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I actually have my own bird, um, uh, Agenda Conyer. He's upstairs, which is why I'm filming downstairs, because they are very loud. Oh, I see. What kind of birds are they? Or bird? Um, they're a species of parrot. Um, Agenda Conyers are a little bit bigger than parakeets. Right. They're really, really colorful and beautiful birds. And how many do you have? Just one. Okay. Can it say anything? Any English words? No, Conyers don't tend to talk all that much, um, mm -hmm. but they're very, very smart. This specific one, uh, I, I've only had him for about a week, um, so he's still kind of wary, but he's sweet. Okay, right on. Um, I just want to say that congratulations because you are the two firsts on the show. You're the first female on the show, and you're the youngest person that's been on the show yet. So Yay, congratulations on that. That's right. All right, here we go. Okay, awesome. You're a digital painter, and you use a program called Paint Tool Sci. Paint Tool Sci. Uh, is that right? Yes. Okay, and I was curious, because I've never used that program before. Have you used Photoshop and Corel as well? Um, I've used Photoshop before a long, long, long time ago. Um, and I had Corel, but it made my computer crash every single time I tried to open it, so I, I didn't use that. Um, and I honestly, I like Paint Tool Sci more than I like Photoshop. Really? And why is that? It's just a simpler interface. I feel like there's more tools. Either that, or I don't know how to use Photoshop correctly. Uh, yeah. It takes a lot less learning to know how to use Paint Tool Sci, sure. and I feel like it just it looks better. Yeah, it seems a lot more intuitive. I mean, Photoshop is a program that wears many different hats. You can do a lot of different stuff. So it, it seems just more like an artsy program, you know, for painting specifically. It is. Uh, let's see. You have, you currently have over, well, you have 1,687 subscribers. So congratulations on that. And that's in only four months. That's pretty awesome, guys. So, very good. Very well done. Uh, tell me about your art. If you had to summarize step-by-step step what you do in your art within three to five steps, how would you describe every step that you do? Um, the sketch layer, um, where you just plan everything out and refine it um, so that you don't have to worry about moving around body parts and messing with the anatomy after you start coloring because that's when it gets hard to adjust things um then you have your coloring right. layer and then when you combine mm -hmm. them after that you have 
your blending painting layer, which is why I always do my canvases mainly on one layer altogether. And then the fourth step is putting effects over it, like soft lighting and different overlays. Okay. Okay, so sketching out the the main lines and the the uh, plan for it, and then the, putting down the main colors, and then working your shadows and your highlights. Is that right? Pretty much, yeah. Mainly. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. What advice, before you jump too far in, what advice would you give now for beginner artists? Oh my god. Practice, 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 practice. I know everybody says that, sure. and it gets really old to hear, but practice is the most important thing that you can do. Absolutely. You heard it here, guys. Uh, let's see. Do you always use a tablet, or do you ever use a mouse only, or before? No, I don't think I've ever used a mouse to draw anything except for when I'm doing like very low pixel count things and that that's just kind of me being bored when I don't have my tablet. It's not anything. <laughs> Brian. Okay, so you usually and what kind of uh, tablet do you use? Uh Wacom Bamboo Create. Okay, Bamboo Create. That's the second tablet I've ever had and I love it. I see. And that's yeah, so bamboos are the tablets that don't have the actual screen on them, right? Right. Okay. All right. Cool. Where do you choose your characters from that you paint up, your subjects? Where do they come from? I noticed you have one, some from a, from a band, and where do the others actually come from? Uh, okay. So there's a webcomic called Homestuck, which has a huge, huge fan base. And um, I get uh, what I draw from um, people send me requests on Tumblr, and I get around to them, and 99% of them are Homestuck. And um, I keep doing them because they get the biggest response, honestly. Okay, I was thinking they were like anime characters, but they didn't look very that anime-ish. You know, they didn't have that kawaii kind of face. So, I guess I need to work harder on giving them more kawaii features. Are they anime characters, though? No. <laughs> okay, so they're not. Okay, so you're doing fine. So you're doing great. I, I, I don't care for Kawhi myself. I mean, I know it's a big thing, but I personally, I like the style you're doing and, you know, keep it up. Thank you. Your average paint time for, well, your average paintings that you've done to, for recording, what would you say the average paint time is for you? About two hours. Two hours. Okay. All right. Uh, I was glad to see your painting on there called Alternative Route. It was a scenic type of painting, a bit different from all the other ones. And even though it didn't get as many views as the others, because maybe those, like you said, their requests, it's really cool just that you did that because, one, it gives people something else to learn about, but also it develops you more as an artist. And as an artist, you got to paint up all sorts of stuff. So really cool to see that on there. Thank you. I'm glad someone noticed it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you did it very well. I, I loved it. I loved how you set the... Uh, uh, was that your idea? Was that your original idea, by the way? Um, yes, sort of. I draw inspiration from different photos I see, but of course there's not a place uh, that looks exactly like that. Right, right. Yeah, it was cool because uh, you showed the size of the tree by setting up the lantern, and as an artist, you know, you can always set up, uh, you can set people there or different subjects to kind of show how drastic something bi is big or how small it can be. And you did a pretty good job with setting up that lantern at the base there as well. Thanks. I, I love drawing things that look like a normal size and then with just a simple lantern making them look huge because it scares me. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's terrifying and I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit of a shocker. Even as an artist, while you're working through it, you, you shock yourself and you're happy with that. Yeah, I, I trust me, I made it up as I went along. <laughs> like when I do art, I'd like to do things to kind of surprise myself because eventually when you keep doing art, people will find you predictable, which could be a good thing. But I also like to do something that I wouldn't see myself doing and you know hope to develop like that and be more uh less predictable for viewers as well you know yeah uh so uh, in one of your videos 
Uh, it's actually one of my favorite videos you had. I think it's the second most viewed one. You mentioned never trust a man that trims his eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is there any story to that? Robert Pattinson. Yes. Um, it was uh, a quote from Robert Pattinson. As far as I know, it's legit. Uh, he was watching a clip from Twilight um, and there was just a shot of him and he said, never trust a man who plucks his eyebrows. <laughs> oh, no, right. so there is a story. But awesome. Great. Watch that video now, guys. All right, cool. Uh, so where did you learn how to paint? Is it all self-taught, just going around DeviantArt and various websites and YouTube? Or did you, did you actually learn digital painting at school or from a tutor? Um, when I was very, very small, um, my mother was still in college. Um, so of course I got pencils and paper to draw with, uh, because I was mm -hmm. bored. Um, and that went on for a long time before I discovered that you can actually paint on the computer. And, um, I started, I got my first tablet and I started trying to copy scenes from really, really terrible animes. Um, and just trying to see how close I could get to the original thing. And then I started memorizing what they looked like so I could draw them myself. And then they started changing and my programs started changing and what I could do with my programs just expanded. Nice. Very nice. Uh, are you taking a lot of art classes at school currently? No, I, I take art classes or I took art classes at school. Um, just because it was an easy grade and I was bored and I would rather take um I would rather take an art class than anything else like you know, gardening or whatever sure. whatever else they offered. I Cooking. didn't know I always took art. <laughs> sure. Uh have you ever gotten into 3D art? Uh 3D art such as sculpting or even digital sculpt sculpting. Um I think that would be something I'd really enjoy if my computer could handle it, but my computer's a dinosaur, uh, and I hear it, it even has a trouble with my really lightweight recording software. I hear you. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully you can get into that eventually. It'd be awesome to see your designs going into a, you know, 3D format, and eventually even be 3D printed and, or painted by hand as well. That's a pretty cool thing with technology nowadays. That would be awesome. I hope one day I can get a computer that can handle it. Well, keep it up. YouTube will pay ya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where do you want to, as an artist and as a creator of these things, where do you want to evolve to or advance to? What's, what's your goal? Have you hit that goal or, or you don't even know yet? Or what's the style you want to kind of develop more? Um, I, I'm pretty happy where I am now, but I know that there's always improvement can always happen um mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to be able to take these characters um from people's favorite web comics favorite shows and just keep them true to their cartoony forms but still make them hyper realistic like veering off into uncanny valley right that's what i want to be able to do awesome very cool let's see oh i was gonna say that even in the your uploads currently, I noticed that from four months ago, I mean, you've probably done other stuff I haven't seen, but it seems like even four months ago, your skill even has improved since then, like in detail and in the textures that you've done in your artwork. I, I think I agree, and I sure, I sure hope that's what people think, because um, sure. when you're practicing so much, like, I, I wasn't practicing as much before I started recording my paintings. Um, but once I did, I felt like I had a duty to just record and put up more videos. And that got me to practice more, which right. uh, it helped. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, art is not an easy thing to keep going. And YouTube's not an easy thing to keep going. And since you're battling both of them and people keep, you know, giving feedback and watching, that kind of keeps you, you know, moving forward. Whereas a lot of times you just get stuck. But, you know, you might get stopped for a week and somebody will keep commenting and requesting and it'll just keep you moving. So it's not money that has to really propel you. It can be people and just community and other motivation. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I'm just, I get so thrilled looking through the comments that I get because I think, little old me, I got a comment. 
I got 20 comments. Yeah. Oh my gosh. People actually care about what I'm doing. No, that's awesome. It's the best feeling in the world. Definitely. And you do you do it very well. And I was impressed at your age and how well you've developed. I mean, this is only four months in. So by the time you even finish high school, I mean, you can have quite a big community following you. you know, a hell of a lot of things you can learn that you never learn in school even, you know? Not within that time range. Right. Uh, is there an artist that you look up to? Um... I really look up to um, an artist called Loish, Lois Van Barl, or I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name, but um, okay, she she does the painty style too, which I draw inspiration from, and also um, another artist which I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce their name, uh, Sakimi Chan. Okay, they they do a lot of things like I was talking about, um, drawing cartoon characters that look really similar to their you know, cartoony selves, but are really realistic. Yes. And I adore that so much. Yes, me too. Uh, there's even an artist that did, like, all the Mario Brothers characters or something like that, or the Pokemon, taking those simple Pokemon images, but they did it in that cool 3D, you know, uh, digital painted style, and I just love seeing those conversions. Me too. Uh, which is the most advanced or... Most advanced artwork you have up on your channel, or that took you the longest to make? Which one? The one uh, titled Mulin. Mm -hmm. It took the longest. I'm not sure if that's my favorite one, though. Um, I think the Red Glare one. It, it might be my favorite, just because I spent a long time on that one, too. But it just, some days, it turns out better than others. Sure, sure. We have our good days and our bad days. Uh... So, did that one take you over two hours or three hours? It took me about two... I, I'm not sure. I I fell asleep with my recording software <laughs> running, and I didn't a feel true like artist. Um, clipping the video to see how long I was drawing for that clip. Um, so, I just had a 10-hour video. I see. Right, right. No, well, you still pump them out pretty fast. With that and I think it's, it's worth mentioning <laughs> that the times that I put on the end of my videos are painting time, which does not include sketching time because I don't put the sketches in my videos. Ah, uh, right, right. Uh, you still make the sketches digitally, right? You don't scan them off of uh, pencil drawings? No, I draw them digitally. Okay. All right. Yeah, that sa saves time. And How did you feel making the first tutorial video you did? Scared. <laughs> Scared? I... Were you just... Mm -hmm. I... I... I have speech impediment. I don't know if you've noticed, but I do. And I don't know. It was kind of comforting to see that people weren't ignoring it and telling me I didn't have one because I know I do, but instead embracing it and saying it sounded nice. So that was great. And there was really positive, you know, feedback to the content of the video too, which, mm -hmm. you know, it just makes me feel glad that I can help people with their art sure. that I'm actually looked up to. Yeah, it's awesome. And you did an awesome job. I mean, as, as far as your speech goes, I mean, with YouTube, you never know what to expect. There's so many different accents, people from around the world. So, I mean, you've probably got a lot of people from Asia watching your videos, and they don't notice these little things. And the people that do, like you said, they said it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was your first time, and you probably felt uh, a little maybe exposed with your voice, but you did it pretty well because you were natural and you had fun with it and you make jokes in it and you were friendly and that's really what people want to see. They want to see your kind of emotion, you know, and really who you are and you, that's what you did awesome about it, in it. You know, it wasn't just a boring tutorial video. So that's what I enjoyed about it. Thanks. I, I, I get, when I'm scared and, uh, you know, nervous, I, I start talking a lot. Uh, and that kind of shows in the video, but I'm I'm just glad that through all my fear, I could muster out some puns or whatever I put in. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool, and, and you actually you didn't make the video first and then watch it over and then comment over it. You were actually working as you were commenting it. Is that right? Yeah, I I didn't want to do um, the former because. I'm very forgetful, and I probably would have forgotten what I was doing at the time. Right, right. 
Yeah, no, that makes sense, and that's a better way. Yep. All right, so finally, uh, with, uh, with the questions regarding your YouTube channel and your video, I want to mention your most viewed video, which is Cyborg Noodle. It's got over 8,638 views and 341 likes. Awesome work there. Tell me, why do you think that video out of all of them hit it big the most? Well, for one, I used uh, music from the band that Noodle is from, Gorillaz. Uh, I used two of those, um, which people tend to like videos more when they have songs that they like in them. And if you're watching a uh, speed paint on Cyborg Noodle, you probably like Gorillaz. And mm -hmm. also, um, Gorillaz is coming back this year, so I think that was really, you know, people started searching it more and finding more videos on it because they're reminded, hey, I love Gorillaz, or they're just starting to realize, hey, who's Gorillaz? I love them. Right. So did you include the song title within the title of the video or just like within the tags and description? I think I put them, uh, no, I didn't put them in the description, but YouTube recognized one of them and labeled it for me. But in, oh, okay. in more recent videos, I've been, uh, especially since I'm using different music that YouTube doesn't recognize, I've been actually putting it in the credits of the video. Okay, okay, cool. All right, we're going to jump into the part of the interview now that's more about you and your daily life rather than your channel and all that. So a little bit more of a personal section here. Uh, well, first of all, when I was watching your tutorial video, I have to ask you, is there a fountain or a fish tank in your room? No, there is not. Oh, there isn't. Oh. Okay, because I was hearing water running, and I was thinking, well, she's got a fountain. That's pretty cool. That's really relaxing. I want to do art in an environment like that. <laughs> so <laughs> now I'm curious. No. Maybe you just had the water running. I don't know, but it was relaxing. Which video was it? In your uh, tutorial video. Oh. No, it's, we have a lot of wooden floors, so it, it was probably just Echo. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, it sounded great. Mm, I know what it was. Uh -huh. it, it was the clicking of my uh, tablet pen against my tablet, making, it kind of makes bubble noises sometimes. Ah, right. Of course. Hey, that's, that's pretty cool. Well, <laughs> well, you didn't have to say that. You can just say you have a huge fountain in there and, you know, you get in your zone there. <laughs> my walls are made out of fish tanks. Yeah. There you go. Uh, let's see. How's your... So how's school? You're in the middle school or high school now? High school. You're in high school now. Okay. And how's it going? That's great. Um, I stopped going to public school uh, last year. This year, we've been doing homeschooling, which I, I like a lot more. <laughs> a lot more. Yeah, I always wanted to kind of try that out even if i had my own kids i wanted to try that out why do you prefer it yourself i just school environments in public high schools are devastating it, it's very stressful there's a lot of people yep very true okay now you being on the another part of this planet i have to ask how is the weather there <laughs> cold it is getting a little bit warmer, but we just had, like, one of the coldest years. A lot of snow? Yeah, a lot of snow. I think there's still a little bit of snow out there, even though it snowed, like, last week. Now, are, do all areas of New Zealand get snow, or are there some uh, warmer areas where <laughs> snow never falls? I'm so sorry. I don't actually live in New Zealand. It's a joke because I, <laughs> I'm from Kiwi. I'm so sorry. Oh, joke's on me. <laughs> no I problem, I just got an update. You're in the States, get out of here. <laughs> You're not that exotic. No. <laughs> what state are you in? Uh, Tennessee. Tennessee, okay, cool. Uh, all right, let me get that down. If I had a nickel for every nice. time that someone said, <laughs> if... Are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only 10 I see. I would probably have a million dollars. Really? <laughs> uh, creativity. All right. So, Tennessee, that's actually pretty cool because one of the last uh, people I had on the show from uh, ne the, the Netherlands, when I asked where would they, one of the questions is if they could live anywhere in the world, where would they like to live? And they said USA, Tennessee. 
I should have asked exactly why Tennessee, but that's pretty I cool. I don't know why they would say that. I'm actually really surprised. There's nothing here. What kind of landscape is it's Tennessee? A- is it mountain? Is it plain? Mountains. Mountains. So many mountains. Like, uh, I'm looking at my window right now, and there's just Appalachian Mountains everywhere. Completely surrounded. Like, when people from Tennessee go to other states where there are not mountains, Mm -hmm. it's just, it feels open and exposed. Like, where are all the walls? Right, right. (laughs) So that's actually pretty cool. Does that make the, like, air pollution kind of stuck in there, though, at times? I'm not sure, because there's also not a lot of huge towns around here, either. Um, I see. There's a neighboring city that's kind of large, but it, there's nothing really bad Mm -hmm. uh, about the pollution here. Okay. Okay, I was asking because uh, I grew up most of my life in Colorado, actually, and Colorado has the Rockies, and they will block off the pollution flow, and you will see it, you know, kind of just drifting by the mountains when you're, you know, at a distance, so that's why I was wondering about that. Okay, yeah, I was thinking, your, your accent is not really very Australian or English, so I wasn't gonna say anything, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's also not very southern either yeah no you have a pretty clear uh i'd say american voice um pretty internationalized i guess or internationally friendly uh let's see so if you're not painting and doing your digital art then what can we find we doing uh what can we find you doing as your free time activity i don't do a whole lot other than draw and do school because I don't have a lot of time to do it. Of course, I take care of my bird, Apollo. Um, I sometimes see my friends. Um, I I got into repainting dolls, um, like their factory paint, taking it off and putting a new face on it. But Oh, interesting. That had to be put on hold because I didn't have the time to do it. Now, when you'd repaint them, would you do something like like really kind of fantasy, kind of freaky, or just kind of... Uh, basically redoing the makeup or something more simple like that? Um, at first I tried to make them look more realistic, like um, using clear nail polish to make eyes shiny and just making their eyebrows better. You can see I'm a fan of eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah, no, that sounds um, cool. But uh-huh. after the first pass, um, I got bored and I just nightmare. <laughs> I just went at it, made them look as horrifying as physically possible. Good, good. You went all, all out. Uh, let's see. You got a few more years, but uh, what do you want to study when you get, uh, if you go to a university or a college? What do you want to study? What do you want to be? I want to be a storyboard artist, maybe an animator, concept art, just something, something like that. I'm not really sure because there's so many different things you can do with art. It's just, there are. ah, there's too much to choose from definitely yeah storyboarding or well concept art would be awesome and and again you can do it for movies or gaming and a lot of different medias now too what i'm doing now is basically concept art i did um yeah i did concept art for my friend's game once but it it never it never got done it it was it never happened have you been to conceptart.org the website no i haven't oh you gotta check that out I used to love that one. I learned a lot about Photoshop painting there, actually, and people are pretty helpful, and they put up work in progress, and there's a lot of professional artists that are right in the forums. So, yeah, conceptart.org. Pretty cool site. Uh, Thanks. uh, I'm sure you have a lot of work on DeviantArt. Is that right? (laughs) No, I don't. No? Okay. Sorry, I, I try to stay as far as I possibly can from DeviantArt. Because um, I left initially when people started leaving. There weren't as many people on DeviantArt. I left and I tried to come back and it just, it's not the best community for art. It's really not. I totally agree with you. Uh, When I found out, sorry, when I found out about DeviantArt, I'd actually started a my website, which was like DeviantArt, and people could post work and artwork. So for me, when I saw DeviantArt, it was kind of like, hey, they're competition, I don't like them, you know, kind of thing. (laughs) But then I noticed, actually, DeviantArt, like the forums, they're not really very art-related. 
and like just the rest of the site, and now it just looks so commercial, you know, and that's the thing. It's packed with people, it's huge, but it's as far as an art website, it's kind of lost that touch to it, I think. It really is really commercialized. Um, like instead of fixing bugs and dealing with uh, interface problems, they add new stickers. It's, it's not a good place for people who want to be professional right. either because it's basically designed like, you know, I was in middle school yeah. when I used it and I thought it was great. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. That's what it seemed like to me. I mean, I was already 26, 27 when I started the site and DeviantArt looked like it was full of like elementary kids that like anime. I didn't see any like quality concept art there. And of course, when you're that young, you need encouragement from other people who are also doing the same things. And that's great, but sure. as, you know, for professional artists and people who want to excel even further than that, then mm -hmm. you can move on to other things. DeviantArt is a great starting place, though. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a stepping stone, All right? All right. So yeah, check out concept art. I hope it hasn't changed much. I haven't been there in a while. But let me know what you think about it. If it's more professional, if it's more uh, motivational for you as well. I will. What? You just started high school, right? You're what, in ninth grade? Eight, tenth. Tenth grade already. Okay, I was going to say, what are you looking forward to in high school? And what are you not looking forward to? But you are homeschooled, so you don't have too much not to look forward to. So uh, you're looking for us. Decent ride, right? Yes. Uh, how about the homework? Um, how is that assigned? Do, you, do your parents kind of have to manage that? Or, or do you have to manage some of that? It, it's all online. Um, so I have my assignments that I can do. And I have a set amount of, of assignments that I'm supposed to do every single day. So, And I, I slacked a lot during the first part of the semester. And some really bad stuff happened. And it was really tough and now that i'm back i'm doing a lot of work like All right, extreme up. amounts of work at one time uh to make up which we're on a schedule where if i do what i'm supposed to every day i will get done in august and then i can start school again okay okay but ne next year it's not going to be like that next year is going to be really good are uh, uh, next year are you planning on going back to regular high school or still homeschool <laughs> no, I'm. We're gonna do homeschool. Okay, still. continue. Cool. Because if if I can prove that I can do this much work at one time, then you know, if I do this number of assignments every day next year, I'm gonna get done in like half the year. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You can have a whole better experience and be done earlier and get your life started. I've got a lot of gamers that watch my channel, and they're probably wondering at this point: Do you play games? I do not have the money to play games. Um, my best friend and I, we play video games at his house. Um, whenever I come over to his house, uh, we play Grand Theft Auto, Skyrim. I just free roaming games like that. Awesome. I'm completely addicted to them. Did you say Skyrim? Yes. Oh, you said Skyrim. She said Skyrim. <laughs> A female Skyrim player. Welcome. Somebody call Gamergate. <laughs> you might want to clip that part out. <laughs> okay, so what's next for you and your channel? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, although um, the titles of my videos are just the names of the characters. So if I draw one character more than once, I'm going to have to actually start giving them titles. So that's all I can really see going on right now. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to start doing some more personal things, like um, speed paints of characters from a webcomic that I'm working with. Okay. Uh, yeah, and things like the, um, the alternate route speed paint. And have it actually get recognition, because having validation as an artist is more important than a lot of people think it is. Yeah. And it's labeled as attention-seeking a lot. But it's important. It is. Yeah, no, it's, so, it's expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. And, like, when I see an artist who, maybe on Tumblr, who doesn't have any notes, I just make sure to reblog and like and, you know, send them asks about their art. Yeah. Because encouragement is everything. Yeah, yeah it is. I forgot who said it, but... 
but I kind of agree with this as an artist as well is, you know, when you're working on art at some points, it's just work. It's hell sometimes to finish off an art piece. But once you're done, you got this huge, you know, accomplishment above you that you can be proud of. Now, that's not always true. I mean, art can be a meditation in itself when you're working on it. But sometimes it really it just is work and it's hard to stay motivated. But in the end, it really pays off. I'm at a point where I I'm doing things that I'm comfortable with. Like um, I'm not the best at drawing bodies, but I'm getting better at it. So it's not as hard anymore. Mm -hmm. And sure. Once you're comfortable drawing something, it stops being frustrating and it stops being hard. And it just drawing is my time of just thinking and just mindlessly doing something uh, while thinking about what's going on in my life right now, kind of reflection. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of how I relax. Sure, definitely. How old were you when you started drawing? I don't remember, but um, my grandmother says that I was about three years old when I really started to, um, when I really started to take it up and get serious about it. You now, as serious as a three-year-old person can be, um, sure. but I'm, I've been doing it as long as I could hold a crayon. Like I said, my mom was in college when I was born, and there wasn't a whole lot to do, so I drew. Right now, the comic book you mentioned that you would be working on is that's uh that's going to be all your designs right all your characters yeah it's it's a web comic um it's actually up right now okay oh cool uh you can give me the link or we'll get the link after and we'll post it below mm -hmm. it's called bubblegum punch awesome yeah so look for that in the description guys and yeah so yeah that's the thing i was going to ask you is i know you've done these characters but i was wondering which, if any of them right now that are up on your YouTube, are completely your designs other than that scenic design? Uh, no, actually. Um, the very first speed paint that I have on there, um, that is uh, a character from a game that my friend is working on. It's not really concept art, it's more like fan art. Um, I don't think the game is out yet, uh, it got postponed, but it's basically about girls who turn into sharks, and I love it, it's really cool. That sounds great. <laughs> it's simple and great. Girls that turn into sharks. Uh, I like in your speed paints also, when you use a reference, you don't copy the reference. You just look at the main points of the reference to transfer, but all your artwork has, you put the characters in different positions. So that's, that's great. Yeah, when you're first starting out, trying to copy the reference directly is, you know, I'm not going to get mad at people for doing that. Tracing and going directly from a reference are two different things, first of all. But sure. you definitely should not profit off something that you're copying directly from a reference. Definitely, definitely. It's a stepping stone. It's a learning point. It's great for practice, but if you want to create something, like you said, for profit or any kind of masterpiece, you got to evolve yep. it, right? Now we're into the kind of quick answer portion. So... Uh, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. What inspires you? What is what? What inspires you? Oh. People's faces? I really like looking at people's faces. Like, people think I'm weird because I just look at them and be like, I really, really want to paint your nose. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to paint mine. It's broken. That's why it looks different from this side than this side. Not. Nah. Or maybe you would. Actually, it, it could be a great nose for an artist to draw. Uneven noses are... So fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what is your favorite word? Spaghetti. <laughs> Spaghetti. Ooh, I really awesome. Like I love hearing something different. I just like noodles. Okay. <laughs> what would you love to be? If you could be... Uh, this means... If you could be any profession completely developed other than an artist, what else would you really like to experience being? Probably a street, for, street performer. Like, those people who paint themselves bronze or silver and just stand really still. My best friend and I, we're going to get um, yeah. street performance licenses just so we can do that. <laughs> really? You need a license? Yeah. Well, I mean, you need a license if you're going to be a vendor or anyone who makes money on the streets. Yeah, no, that'd be interesting. And it's not a bad income either. You got to be on your feet all day, but 
And I, I really like makeup. There's definitely worse things. I really things. like makeup, so, like, painting someone mm -hmm. entirely bronze will be so fun. And then just seeing the reactions on people's faces when you're not a statue. <laughs> I agree. To be honest, I've, I've thought about it myself. <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> well, recently we were in the, uh, Malaysia, and I saw a couple street performers there. Uh, and back in the U.S., I didn't see many. I guess you'd have to go to New York and really big cities. But like Singapore, Malaysia, you'll see them, you know, quite a bit. So uh, I was just thinking, you know, that's kind of cool. Those are tropical countries, so it's got to get hot. But I went to New York recently, and um, I didn't really see many street performers other than people in costume taking pictures with people. But I was also on Times Square where, you know, there's a lot of tourists who want to take pictures with characters. So it made sense. Mm -hmm. What grosses you out? Oh boy. People. Like, <laughs> just people being really rude. That's what grosses me out the most. Disgusting. Blech. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. What do you love to hear in the morning? What do you love to hear at night before going to sleep? In the mornings, I just, I like it to be quiet. I like to be up before anybody else is up, which doesn't happen very often. Um, and I just, sitting by the window, drinking tea or something poetic like that, looking out at the highway. Um, it, it's really beautiful and terrain and just a moment of quiet. And at night, sure. um, I, I double up earplugs and sound-canceling headphones uh, so I can listen to my music, which is mostly gorillas, but... Okay. Just, I, I like quiet. Uh, let's see, what scares you? Fish. <laughs> fish. Okay, so that whole aquarium wall idea was not good. <laughs> I, I'm only afraid of fish when, one, I can't see them, or two, I am in the water with them, or bulls. And yet, I go swimming all the time. Hmm. Like, <laughs> well, did, did this... Kind of like people who are afraid of scary movies, watching scary movies. Right, they, they love it, right. Uh, well, did this kind of influence consciously or subconsciously your comic book for women that turn into sharks? No, that's my friend's, uh, my friend's game. Ah, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> no, my, my girlfriend writes all of the Bubblegum Punch script. I just illustrate it. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Uh, what animal would you love to be? Obviously not a fish. <laughs> or maybe a fish. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Some kind of bird-cat hybrid? I really like cats. I really like birds. An owl? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I don't no. know why I thought about that, but... <laughs> the owl's got, I guess, that circular head like a cat, and you got the horned owl, which has kind of ear-like feathers. Yeah, I, I, I think if you combine a cat and a bird, it would be an owl. It's very good. All right. Uh, what excites you most? Probably getting recognition on something that I've worked really hard on. Definitely. I think that would excite most people, though. Do you have any other channels? Mm, not that I put anything on. Like, I have other Google Plus accounts, um, but it's just you know, okay for me to reply to people. I had a YouTube account when I was very small. <laughs> With my best friend, and we're not gonna talk about that any further. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> all right. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Every most people have little hidden things like that. You got to start somewhere. Well, it's not even starting somewhere. We just put up silly stuff. Even I, I have something, and I still have it up in YouTube. I'm not gonna mention it though. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> that silly <laughs> thing, <laughs> yeah, that silly thing's gone viral. But stuff I work my butt off. None of that will go viral. <laughs> it's just how it works. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have my old videos. No one watched them. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> They're just kind of cringeworthy 10-year-old. Understood. Uh, what advice would you offer beginning YouTubers? And what do you like most about YouTubing? Advice? Tag everything. Mm -hmm. Tag everything multiple ways. I don't just phrase everything multiple ways in the tags so that people can find your stuff. Always do that. Give good descriptions. Um, tell people what music you're using, what programs, what tools. Um, be friendly. Reply to comments. 
um, just be interactive with people. And what was the second part? What do I like about YouTubing? Uh, and what do you, yeah, what do you like most about it? I don't know. It's just, the whole experience was just kind of fun. Well, getting feedback, getting requests, getting praises and questions, that's all fun, isn't it? Uh, I was going to say, so like you said before with your advice about art is practice, 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 tag, and put your work up there, guys. Like, I don't have many of my artworks up and I haven't been posting much, but five years ago I did a, uh, what is it, a Asian style dragon uh, speed paint. And three years later, a company, a dragon boat racing company, contacted me and wanted that dragon on a paddle and I worked it out and redesigned a little portion of it. So the point is you never know who will find one of your art pieces and what it'll connect you to. Yeah, speaking of which, um, I was on a plane once to Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, this man was sitting next to me across the aisle. And of course I was drawing and he, he looked over and he started talking to me about my mm -hmm. art and what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. And it turns out that he was the president of uh, the CIM, the Cleveland Institute of Music, and one of his buddies was, was um, the president of the Cleveland nice. Institute of Art, and he sent him an email about me. So just always be ready mm -hmm. to meet someone. Like, ha make your own business cards. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or carry around a sketchbook as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very important. Awesome. All right, so finally, what message would you like to leave your followers, fans, and friends out there? Practice. Just practice. That's all I have to say. It's all you got to do. Yep. And that's any kind of art form, guys. Sculpting, music, singing, dancing, whatever. It's all art. Practice. There you have it, guys. Awesome artist. Awesome person. First lady at our show. Hopefully you enjoyed. Go check out her website, uh, go to check out her <laughs> channel, go check out her illustrations for the, her online comic book, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. That she's working the, w on with her friend. So go check that stuff out, like her stuff, subscribe, check it out, comment, maybe, you know, fill out some requests or ask some questions. She's very cool. She tries to respond to every comment she gets. If you guys want to be on the show, Remember, have a fun channel, be creative, put effort in it, you'll be found out, or contact me, we'll get you on the show. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave us with a like if you did, and let us know if you would like to see her back. I'd definitely like to see you back in the near future, and even also in the further future, once you get all established and you're actually living off of your passion. That would be super fun. Awesome. So here's my digital handshake to you. I don't know how long I'll keep doing these up. We'll see. And goodbye, guys. Thanks for watching the show. Subscribe and comment down below, and maybe you can be on our next show. Be sure to check out Arthur Kadawa's gameplays, monsters, and other work. You're a digital paint. Okay, let me restart that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just a sec. I forgot to turn an extra line on. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep going. Don't worry. I'm sorry. It's all right. What was I going to say? My mind just blanked. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm sorry. I've been working all day. Uh, uh, basically, quick answers. Uh, well, no, not yet. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to cut that whole part out. <laughs> I got scared for a uh, second. Can't see my expressions too well there. I'm not even wearing my glasses. I can't see anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Even the spam. And it, remember, guys, if you want to be... <laughs> I'm going to have to cut that out now. No. <laughs> if you guys want to be on the show, remember, have a fun channel. Be creative.